such a beautiful and significant thing that when the angels announced the birth of the Savior, they also talked about peace. They also talked about the gift of peace. And I've often wondered about this promise of peace that was given by these myriads of angels to the shepherds on that quiet night in Bethlehem. What was that like for them to have received that? Because when we look forward in history from that time, or we look backward from today, we see that the world is so often not a peaceful place. In fact, over the last couple thousand years, over 90% of the time, there are wars going on in the world. Even in 2011, there were so many wars. In Colombia, uh, 3,500 people died in 2011 in war. In Afghanistan last year, 6,870. In Somalia, 1,400. In Iraq, 5,200. And the list goes on and on. In 10 different countries, over 1,000 people died in war during the last year. And there's also domestic violence that's on the rise throughout the world. Right now, in many countries, over 30% of women report that they have been victims of domestic violence. And divorce rates are soaring. In America, they're still hovering somewhere around 50%. They've actually dropped a little bit because of the tight economy. People can't afford divorces. But still, divorce is happening on a very high rate. So where is this peace that the angel promised when there's a world that's so full of tension and hatred and anxiety and fighting? Actually, on reflection, we can see that Jesus brought all the peace that is needed for our world because he taught the principles of peace. As he was leaving his life on earth, he said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you in John chapter 14. And Jesus taught us the path to have heavenly peace. He taught us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to turn the other cheek and to go the extra mile. He taught us to forgive, and we will not be forgiven. We will not have a peace of forgiveness unless we forgive others. He taught us to reject greed and not to stand in judgment of anyone. He taught us to live in service and to love others, even as he has loved us. He taught us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness before we seek the things of this world, to put God first and to put God first in all things in our lives. And he taught us through his word to focus on things that are noble and right and pure and lovely and admirable and excellent and praiseworthy. And if we live this life that he has directed us to live, we have the possibility of peace. Remember, the angel's promise of peace was not peace for all men. The angel said, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. So the peace that the angels presented to the shepherds, announced to the shepherds, was a conditional peace. It was conditional upon people that were living lives that were favorable to God. God's favor rests on those who love him and who keep his teachings. Jesus said in John chapter 14, If you love me, you will keep what I command. Having peace is all about loving God and following his word. And so within this teaching, there's kind of a test for us to give ourselves. Are we at peace? Deep in our souls, do we have that peace? And if we don't, it's an indication that we are not adhering to God and to his word. Because the fruit of adhering to God and his word is divine peace. God grants us that grace. The world seeks peace in exterior things. It says, if I had a job, I would have peace. If I had a better job than the one I have, then I'd have peace. If I had a different boss than the boss I had now, then I would definitely have peace. If I had some more money, I'd be at peace. If my health were better, I would be at peace. If the health of my loved one were better, then I'd be at peace. If someone in my life, a family member or a friend, changed something about themselves, then I would be at peace. And the world trains us to think this way, that peace comes from exterior change. But Jesus teaches us something different. 
Jesus teaches us that by adhering to God and his word and following his ways, that is the one true path to peace. All other peace that the world offers is temporary, fleeting, and transitory. Jesus' peace is different. And he said in John 14, not only peace I leave with you, my peace I give with you, but the full sentence is, I do not give to you as the world gives. Jesus' peace is different than the false peace that this world offers. When, he, when we adhere to the ways of the world, we will have anxiety. When we adhere to the word of God, we will have the peace that we seek. This Christmas, and as we move forward into the coming year and think about the kind of resolutions that we want to make, I want to encourage you to think about making, finding your peace with God an absolute top priority. So that being full of that peace, you might present the peace of Christ to the world and glorify the one whose birth we celebrate today, together with his Father and Holy Spirit, unto the ages of ages.